uh, a few things. Number one, I want to say uh, just extremely proud of these young men. Uh, you know, to win a conference championship, you know, you're, over a two and a half month period, that is not easy to do. And especially when you're picked to win it, one. And secondly, you're getting everyone's best shot. Uh, these young men had to do a job and to fight through all the negativity uh, from media, fans, from everybody back in, back in November after the Bahamas and to stay together and not let things and to kind of just stay together and, and, and get to this point is a, is, is a tremendous testament of character to these young men. And I'm very, very proud of that. Because it, I'm just telling you, and Tom Izzo said it, if you watch him uh, be, uh, in pregame when they played Indiana, he made a remark saying, teams, the best teams to have chance to have great success, you have to go through some adversity at some point. You have to. If you don't go through some adversity, whether it's external, internal, whatever it is, it's hard to, to, really, to really get to where you want to get to. And obviously, you know, we've gone through a little adversity early, early on in the year, and, and we had to stick together. Um, and that's not easy. Obviously, things could have gone a different direction, but our guys to, to stay together and stay positive and have great positive energy and to win a regular season championship, um, it was special. Um, to do it against Southern Miss, which is a very good basketball team, just very, very proud of these young men. Very, very proud of these young men. To do that, it takes three things. Number one, obviously, we have great players, tremendous young men. Secondly, I have tremendous assistant coaches who prepare the game plan. I mean, Damon Stoudemire and Aki Collins are going to be future head coaches. And then third and, and, and right there with the players and the assistants, obviously, is the fan base. I mean, to, to win championships, you've got to have those three things, and that's what we have. So a wonderful win. So proud of our young men. Great win. So proud of these young men. And um, to win a conference championship is awesome. Now, we're going to enjoy this. We get to Monday, we got to now focus on, we play a very good, well-coached, high-level team, Xavier, and it's with a Z, by the way, it's with a Z, Xavier, okay, a high-level team on Tuesday, 6 o'clock, ESPN2. Let me tell you this, to win 18 straight in a row, again, I know some of you here who, some of you only come, you know, when it's once in every blue moon, I don't want to name any names, but, but, um, but some of you know that, that it's hard to win 18 straight games, okay? It's hard to win 18 straight games. Not easy to do. And I don't want to hear anyone saying, well, it's, no, no, no. Because if you ask anyone in the coaching profession, I get more text messages from coaches in the profession who are experts. Remember, experts, this is our field. They are experts. They say to win that many in a row is so hard. Man, they say, that's crazy. So to do that, you don't take those things for granted. To win conference championships, you don't take things for granted. And, and um, I'm just so proud of the, these guys to do that. So uh, we, we're tied with Akron. They've won 18 in a row. We've won 18 in a row, which is, again, which is just, just tremendous, which also shows you how great this program is and why it's, why it's so much bigger than any coach or any player. We've got the fifth longest uh, streak ever in the history of Memphis. I mean, we're at 18 wins. 99.9% .9 of the program's 18 wins. The coach gets a statue built, and it's the number one streak in the country. And for that program, this is the fifth longest. It's crazy when you think about that. That's crazy. That just shows you how great this program, the tradition, and the history, and what it means to put that jersey on. Yeah. And well, let me say one more thing. You tell me, Jaron Johnson, I mean, I, I, I really think, you know, and, I, and I'm hoping – as we move forward, that the committee knows this as well, too. I mean, you know, we didn't have Jaron in the Bahamas. I mean, that first game, I'm not saying we beat VCU. I'm not saying that because I don't know because I think VCU is good enough to go to the Final Four and win the whole thing. I've said that publicly. I mean, Shaka's a dear friend, very, very dear friend. And, um, and so, you know, they're good enough. But I'm just saying, you know, Jaron's arguably one of our better players, obviously. And then that second game versus Minnesota, you know, that's his first game. That's his first game. So I, I think those things will be, to a, a, you know, taken and accounted. Now, people might ask, what do you think about the tournament? Here's my thing. We got game. We still got a lot of games left. So a lot of basketball to be played. And uh, we got a great game coming up against a great coach and a great team on Tuesday at Xavier.
When you, Josh, when you start playing when, as this goes forward into the tournaments and, and tougher games, Xavier, whatever, what part of your team are you most concerned about that has to come through or when you're playing the best, the best teams in the country? But you, you, here's the thing. I, had, I was spoke at a rebounders event on Thursday. You know what a guy told me? A fan, he said, I've been a season ticket holder for 30 years. This is the most unselfish team I've ever seen on the floor at the Memphis Tigers. We have 25 assists on 29 made field goals. Now, we got to make shots. I understand that. And let me tell you this. Southern Miss is a really good team. I tell you, Donnie Tyndall, big-time coach, big-time coach. I mean, high-level coach. He does, he's done such a good job at Southern Miss. They run good stuff. They've got really good players. That's an NC2A tournament team, Southern Miss. And, um, and they're very well coached. So, I mean, but we're very unselfish. Again, it helps that we're making shots. That's a big thing. And when you make shots, the coach looks good. And I keep telling everyone this is a player's game. This is not a coaching game. It's a player's game. I was going to ask you about the assist. Is the difference between this team and past teams the unselfishness, depth? You're not, they're not. Jaron didn't have a great first half. It didn't matter. Is it? It feels like there's so you. You have, this team has so many answers that it's. That might be what separates it from your teams in the you past. You know what, Jeff? I mean, we got five guys in double figures, but some of our turnovers are because there's, we're too unselfish, and I love that. And. I'm just so proud of these young men. So proud of these young men because you're playing, you're just, you're witnessing beautiful basketball. Again, you know, you got to continue to do it every night out. You got to make shots. But, but w my theory, my philosophy has always been the open man's the go-to man. Um, and let me tell you this. I told Joe Jackson this after yesterday's practice. I said, because he he, our practice his last two days was terrific. And I said to Joe, I said, Joe, because he was, he was rebounding like crazy yesterday. And I said, Joe, when you rebound like that, man, when you go in and stick your nose in there, I can live to 100 years old. I'm just telling you because I get extra pep in my heart. I feel it feeling good. I feel the juices flowing. If you, if you don't rebound, I'm telling you, I feel the ulcers coming inside me that I am actually feel unhealthy, that I'm losing days of my life. And let me tell you this, Joe Jackson stuck his nose in there with five big boards. If a doctor examined me today, not a coach, but a doctor who's an expert in that field would say I'd be 100 years, I'd be living to 100 based on my health today because of Joe's rebounding. I do know, so you're going on The Bachelor? What's the, the, the Bachelor, the Bachelorette thing? No, I'm just saying, <laughs> if, you, if you go, everyone talks about the NC2A term. I understand it. I mean, that's the, that's the granddaddy of them all. But don't, I don't want to hear anyone not take this for granted about winning conference championships. That's over a two and a half month, three month time span to do that. That is hard to do. It, it, you know, you're judged so much on just a tournament, which is a three-week process. That's what they do in The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. You, you, you all of a sudden marry someone in three weeks, and you're going on seven different dates with seven different people a week, but all of a sudden you're madly in love with someone. Yeah, exactly. But my point is, but that's why I show you, in three weeks. So let's not dis diminish how hard it is to win conference championships, regular season conference championships. I, you know, I, I, don't, I would never want to be on the Bachelor or Bachelorette, though. I wouldn't be good at it. <laughs> no. Next question. Josh, just a, an update on, on Antonio. Uh, he's on the bench. To just as you try to add that piece now uh, in a couple of weeks, what's, what's the latest on him? Uh, Antonio, uh, he's, he's getting better. Um, I, I think there's a chance he could come back uh, maybe even for the UAB game, probably more, more, more. Um, and, and again, it's up to Mother Nature. But he's off crutches, he's off the boot. It's really up to, again, like I said, to the doctors and obviously uh, Mother Nature, how he heals, how fast he heals. But uh, uh, I would say the probable probability of him coming back for the conference tournament, I would say, is high. Now, you know, those, you, I don't know until, you know, we can't have him get back until he's 100%. And those things aren't easy, I tell people, because, you know, you, you want to find some time um, to be able to get him in, to work him in. It's kind of like Adonis' situation last year when he got injured. And we had to kind of work it in, you know. So we just got to see now we, in the conference tournament, you know, if you're fortunate to play three games, it's back to back to back. So you need as many bodies as you can. But, um, you know, we'll just see it. And it's whenever the doctors clear them, we'll go. Just, just talk about, I guess, uh, against a team like Southern Miss that thrives on creating turnovers. Press, I mean, you've taken care of the ball against them, you know, two two games, and then a uh, Houston. There's 19. Is that does that just go back to where it's, it's just well, about you guys? Yeah, it's about us and some even Houston and some of our turnovers here. A little bit there were some unselfish. You know, we play too unselfish at times. But, 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 Jason, um, you know, the biggest thing is we are we are pretty good defensively for the most part. I mean, Southern Miss is an NC2A tournament team. I mean, that team is well coached, an NC2A tournament team. 
And, um, but, you know, again, you look at, you know, Adonis really played well for us. I thought Shaq was tremendous, absolutely tremendous. Joe was just really, really good. DJ's the most efficient player in college basketball. Jaron did a really good job. Dwayne Davis is a player. Wow, is he a player. But Jaron did a good job of trying to slow him down when we put him on him. And, he gave, and again, he had seven assists, Jaron. Uh, Farrakhan Hall gave us good minutes when he got in there in that first half. Tark, three assists was good. And, of course, Chris Crawford was, was really good again. And a bench was great. So it's just us, Jason, continuing to get better. Um, and we got to now – I, I told our team I want us to enjoy this all day today, all day tomorrow. Then Monday we've got to get locked back in, ready to go for, for uh, Xavier. I mean, again, and I don't want anyone to say – I don't want to hear it because I'll be listening, talking about, about Xavier. I hear everything. It doesn't, even if I don't listen, I have people listening to everybody. So, so because I'm going to call I'm – if you're going to call me on the carpet, I'm calling you on the carpet. So you've got to be accurate on things you say. It's very important to me. Now, Xavier is very – I don't want to hear people saying, well, they're down. No, they're not down, man. They're good. That's a good basketball club that's well coached. they got good players. So, so I don't want to hear anything else. And if you don't believe me, you know what? Go ask other coaches in the profession who are experts. Experts. If you want doctor advice, you go medical advice, you go to a doctor. You want basketball advice about how good teams are or players, you talk to a coach, not to anyone else. What does the most efficient player in college basketball mean? Well, per minutes on his production. And this wasn't me just saying this. This was factual based on um, um, they have a guy in the morning, um, uh, one of the guys, uh, Chris, I forget who comes on. Uh, John, what's John the guy? Gasol. Yeah, has said it that he does this thing with uh, uh, an ESPN and talks about. Um, uh, Podcast on Sports 56 whbqcom I'll let you say there you go. <laughs> but, 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 but he says it in there. Jonathan Gasway said that he's the most efficient player in college basketball. He has a thing on that. He's not a coach. How would he know? Those are numbers. Those are numbers. That's numbers. That's numbers. Now, I agree. Eli, you, have said, you and I have agreed to disagree on numbers. But I still say numbers it. Numbers don't matter, you say. But I, just for DJ Steffens, it matters. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> not for teams. Because let me tell you this. Let me go back real quick. I know you got a question, Jason. University of Houston, they got two pros. Daniel House and Tayshawn Thomas, they got, those are two pros. People have players. That doesn't mean that because that, you've got to look at the other team wants to win too. Everybody's good, man, in this day and age. Everybody's good. This, I think, was 20 out of 23 last year to finish it up going into the, into the tournament. This one's 18 straight. You haven't finished it up. But does, does it feel like you're coaching a better team than last year? Jason, I don't take one win for granted. I mean, it's what we've done here to continue to keep it at a high level. Not easy to do. You know, you're following someone who had the greatest run, you know, a first ballot Hall of Famer in Coach Calipari and trying to keep it, you know, not drown and keep it at the very highest level. Um, you know, it wasn't easy to do. And to continue to keep winning at this level through this stretch, you know, we've taken some ups and downs here and there, but uh, – uh, it's a for for us to win that many games. I don't like last year, 20 of 23, or this year at this point, 18 in a row. Those things are not easy, and that is strictly because of our players who make plays, our assistant coaches who prepare the game plans. I think they're the best in the country at preparing game plans, and obviously our fan base having such a great home court advantage, and we have tremendous media too, the support that we get from the media. Josh, when you guys are clicking. I would imagine opponents have to pick their poison on what to do against you. The inside with Stephens and Goodwin and, and Black, when you're hitting the threes or you're in transition, they gave up a lot of threes down there, which helped you win that game. Why were you able to get those open threes? Obviously, you knocked them down. And why were they? <laughs> That's okay. And, and I got you. again, they may have put more emphasis on trying to slow you down transition yeah. or inside, but the threes and, were and, wide open. And, and to talk on, and to answer your question and to add on maturity, if anyone watched Joe Jackson with Greg Gaston last night on Sports Files, if you saw Joe's, Joe's comments to the questions that Greg asked, I thought it was unbelievable maturity the way he answered questions. And if you haven't, you should go back and watch it. I'm telling you, he had such great clarity on things. He said, think about the words he used, positive and about energy and about um, continuing to prove. He talked about we and team. I, I tell you, Joe's maturation is phenomenal. Phenomenal, and if, you, if I'm telling you, watch the show. You can see what I'm saying on, on what how Joe answered the questions. But you know, Southern Miss is a great three-point shooting team, and 
and uh, and we're a very good three-point shooting team as well too. So, it was, I think it was one of those things, uh, Greg, where you know Southern Miss is just good overall. I mean, they're just a good club. You know, when you hit some threes, that, that opens some things up. That's just a fact. And when we are in that stretch today, I think it was 28-28 or 28-23, went on like a 12-13-0 run, hit a couple threes that just kind of opened everything up. I've always said this, the three-point shot's the equalizer now. You only have to shoot 33% from three to equal 50% from the field. So, uh, and that's, that's why college basketball, the gap is closed because you have so many good shooters all across the country.